It's an honor to meet you, Morpheus Codius. Of course it is. Now sit down, you dumbass. As I said, your engine is trash, hmm? You could say that. I can see it in your code. You have a look of the man who accepts what his engine is because he's expecting nothing more. Ironically, this is not far from the truth. Do you believe in code gains? Yes. I know exactly how to make code gains. Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you want to make code gains. But you don't know how. And this has brought you to me. Your engine is garbage. You have to make it better. You take the blue pill, your code stops being spaghetti, everyone will want to use it. You take the red pill, your engine becomes fast and efficient. Remember, you can only choose one. Come back when you fix your code. Hello there. I initially coded very basic stuff without much care since I did not expect that I would reach this point. But the time has come. I created a bunch of tasks like camera, materials, multiple shader support, general code improvements, instance rendering, entity component system, and so on. <clears throat> without further ado, today I will tackle instance rendering. And you may ask, what is instance rendering? Before I start explaining, let us take a look at our current setup. Imagine we have a million identical cubes. This example would fit any geometry, such as trees, grass, or statues, or whatever. Anyway, with our current setup, for each cube during initialization, we load the vertex and index info into the GPU. And before rendering each frame, we bind the cube's modal matrix to a constant buffer so the shaders can access the cube's position, rotation, and scale. Then we make a draw call to the GPU for each cube separately 1 million times. If every piece of geometry is rendered one by one, with increasing geometry count, we will very quickly run into some serious performance problems. First, each GPU draw call introduces a certain amount of overhead or lag in the background, such as setting up rendering states, binding shaders and other resources. For simple objects, this amount of overhead might actually be more significant than the rendering itself. Second, if not multi-threading, we are relying each frame on a single CPU thread to transfer the modal matrices into the GPU one by one. This by itself is not a huge deal, but with millions of memory copy operations each second, it can get out of hand very quickly. Third, we want to minimize the amount of communication between the CPU and GPU. If we can transfer data in larger batches, we should do it, since any communication involves overhead. And lastly, fourth, if making draw calls one after another, we have to wait until the previous one finishes in the GPU, essentially leaving the CPU with nothing to do in the meanwhile, and it would be best to minimize this waiting time by reducing the amount of draw calls. So how will instancing help resolve this? Let's watch a short clip from Nvidia published 13 years ago, where Adam Savage and Jamie Heinemann from Mythbusters run a demo comparing the ideas behind CPUs and GPUs. The CPU works in a very linear fashion drawing the smiley face one pixel at a time. Nowadays this is not quite true, since most processors already have more than 10 logical cores, but for the most part this is correct. If you look at the demonstration for the GPU, it draws a 1100 pixel painting of Mona Lisa instantly. The graphics processing unit is essentially made to perform large batches of computations in parallel, so with instance rendering, 
our goal is to rely on GPU more and render multiple objects simultaneously in a similar analogy to this demo. From the graphics API side, DirectX 11 provides instant draw call functions, so we only need to modify our shader a bit and create a structure from the CPU side that will allow us to manage the instances. For instance management, I thought of a solution that will use so-called instance pools, where each pool will be responsible for only one type of geometry. In the pool we store the vertex and index information, and the list of positions, rotations, and scales for all instances using 4x4 matrices. The instance renderer can have any amount of these pools, and the rendering logic will treat them independently of one another. The main idea for instance rendering is that we only transfer the vertices and indexes of one single piece of geometry into the GPU, since all instances are only in different positions or rotations or scales but use the same base model. The only thing we need to update in the shaders each frame is the instance data, currently being position, rotation and scale. And this is where the biggest optimization occurs. Modern graphics devices specifically support this type of rendering and can render all instances simultaneously instead of one by one. By defining the per instance data constant buffer in the shader and adding instance ID as a parameter to the main shader program, we are essentially telling the shader that it can be expected to be called using the draw instance API. Of course, we still need to make the constant buffer in the shader match with the one we allocate from the CPU side, and this has caused me some funny problems because, you see, I initially forgot to multiply the instance constant buffer size by the count of the instances when setting the width of the buffer and try drawing 10 cubes. Funnily enough, instead of a crash or one cube, I got four. This made no sense. In theory, the memory copy operation is transferring 10 times more memory than expected, but nothing breaks. And the shader also works in mysterious ways. Even if the instance buffer size is set to a different size than the amount of instances received, sometimes if we make a draw call with more, it just does not care and renders them anyway. It seems that this whole array size thing is just a formality and is unlikely to cause crashes, but rather to cause unexpected behavior. This makes it very easy to make mistakes and access memory out of bounds, and I can tell how much of a pain it would be to debug problems like this, since there is no direct way to tell what is wrong if it is partially working sometimes. The instance renderer works like this. It can have multiple pools where each pool has a key or a number and is responsible for dealing with only one specific geometry model. To initialize a pool, we pass the vertex info and the index info. And to add the instances, we specify which pool the instance goes to and what is its position, rotation and scale in the world. We do need to keep track of instance positions in the array outside of the instance renderer if we plan modifying them. The rendering part is quite similar to regular rendering, but the whole pool setup requires an additional loop. We go over all pools one by one, if needed we could bind any per object data like colors or textures here, and then we go into a while loop that checks if all instances of this type have been rendered. Rendering is done in batches instead of one by one though we can't render all 1 million cubes in one go. It seems that this count depends on the graphics processing unit you are using, but I was able to draw 1024 cubes in one go. For each batch, we copy-paste the transformation data of all instances into the GPU, so the shader can access it. The rendering part is calling the DirectX11 API function called drawIndexedInstance, where we specify the index count and the instance count. And that's it. This took me quite a while to code, but I managed to get it working. It's about time we talk about how this affected the performance in practice. The main performance test is rendering the 1 million cubes. Using regular setup with draw indexed on release config, I managed to get around 5 frames per second. Honestly, this is better than I expected. With instancing, the FPS I managed to achieve was a bit over 100, so this would be acceptable for a PC game, 
the frame rate is over 40 times higher than without instancing and it is safe to say that this was a huge success. I also tried comparing results using the Windows XP 3D pipe simulation we previously made. I recoded it to use the instance renderer and ran some tests. It was not a huge surprise, but for the most part the FPS was around 1500 for both tests. For instance rendering to be effective, we seemingly need at least tens of thousands of objects. You may ask, Mr. Codegain sir, are you going to ever render millions of pieces of geometry? And the answer is yes! I plan to run some simulations that will involve lots of particles simulated by gravity calculations. I will probably start with something like a million particles orbiting a planet. The plan is to combine fast rendering with an easily multi-threaded architecture like Entity Component System to create something cool and learn along the way. Speaking of learning, hopefully you learned something new. Have a nice day.